So uh, you get the softball question first. I understand you're throwing out the first pitch today for your beloved uh, White Sox. Yes. Um, your, your thoughts for opening day. What's, what's the team going to do? Well, look, uh, they've unfortunately been in a rebuilding mode for, I think, a little too long. And I'm, but I feel optimistic about this season. Um, they had a, a decent um, spring season. So I'm optimistic, as all White Sox fans are in April. Um, but I'm excited about the opportunity to, to be there and to, and to throw out the first pitch. Down to business. What's the biggest difference people are going to see in your administration from the current one? Well, I mean, the current mayor and I are completely different personalities. So I think I will be much more um, visible and open. Um, I also really believe in good governance and transparency. Look, we've got a lot of hard decisions that we're going to have to make um, that are going to impact people's lives, um, so, so particularly around uh, municipal finance. And I'm just going to be very open and, and transparent with people. I think that's the only way um, to do it. We've got some hard choices that we're going to have to make. Um, and I'm also going to really fundamentally push back um, against the remnants of the machine, particularly in governmental operations. I'm going to I'm going to make good on the promises that we made during the course of the campaign about opening up city government and getting rid of all the vestiges of the machine. That's going to ruffle some feathers, to be sure, particularly the old guard members of the city council. But get ready for it. Um, that's what I ran on. That's the mandate that we, I think, we overwhelmingly received on election night. And I'm going to make good on, on those commitments and promises. Who will be your floor leader, and, and who do you see as uh, handling important committee chairmanships like finance, zoning, and public safety? Well, we're just looking at those issues now, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I've had some preliminary discussions with, you know, aldermen who were supportive and endorsed me during the course of the campaign. But I intend to reach out to all 50 members, particularly the the new ones, some of whom I know, some of whom I don't know as well. Um, but. We are going to have to reshape city government to make it more effective and responsive, and that has to include the city council as well. How will you deal with the socialists? You know, uh, look, I don't know why um, they have uh, chosen those monikers, but I feel confident that we can work with, with everybody. We're, it's important to have a good pr uh, productive relationship with all the members of city council. I intend to, tend to do that. And look, these young people who have come in, they fought, you know, particularly Andre Vasquez, who is a really good guy, um, fought hard and won a big upset against uh, Pat O'Connor. Um, I'm going to look to form relationships with all of them, where we can partner, we will, where we disagree. That's, that's what democracy is all about. How do you balance being the mayor of Chicago with also your role as a national figure now? Well, first and foremost, I'm the mayor of Chicago. That's the job that I wanted. That's the job that I've won. Um, it's important that we make sure that Chicago is on the map nationally, and I recognize that. Same thing globally. But first and foremost, you got to take care of um, home base, and that's what I intend to do. Um, you're headed to Springfield next week. Mm -hmm. uh, what's on your agenda? Well, there are a range of things. I mean, first and foremost, I need to introduce myself to members of the General Assembly that, that I don't know and who don't know me. Uh, I want to hear from them. And, you know, obviously, we're going to be going there with a list of priorities that we'll, uh, we're fleshing out now. But it, this is just an, an initial meeting. Um, I'm not the mayor yet, and I'm mindful of President Obama's admonition when he was the president-elect. There's only one mayor at a time. But I feel like it's important for them to get to know me, um, understand what some of our priorities are. We can, that is one area that can't wait until May 20th, because things are moving um, at a rapid pace down there now, as, it, as always happens at this point in the session. So we want to make sure that we put down some markers on important issues. The elected school board passed the House 110 mm -hmm. to 2. Mm -hmm. Do you support the bill as it's written? I do not support this bill. I absolutely support an elected school board. But I want a process that's actually going to work. Changing one broken system with another flawed one doesn't make any sense to me. Um, we're, we're looking at different options and models. But I don't support a 21-member board. I just think that's completely unwieldy. I want to make sure that there's an opportunity for true parent representation. And we're looking at some ideas to make that happen. And I also want to be mindful of the fact I don't want to turn school board elections into a multi-million dollar exercise, because that's going to preclude you know, good uh, average working families from having a seat at the table. We can't have that. Um, 
calling for the feds to look at the McCormick McDonald cops caused some blowback from chiefs of police. Does this signal that you're going to have a very frosty relationship with CPD? Well, the union isn't CPD, and the union leadership is not representative of its members. I believe that I received a tremendous amount of support from individual police officers um, because they recognize that what I'm trying to do is make their jobs better and more effective so they can serve the communities that they're sworn to uh, protect. So um, leadership is one thing, the rank and file members are an entirely different issue. I'm going to keep speaking to those rank and file members who I think are important. Um, and you know, we're going to try to develop as good a relationship as we possibly can with union leadership. But the, the status quo just went out the door with the election results on Tuesday. And they need to recognize that change is here. It's not just coming, it's here. You said you would not get rid of Eddie Johnson during the campaign. Um, will you set up a national search to find a replacement for him? No, what I said during the campaign is that given that the police department needs to continue its primary mission of serving and protecting, they've got to start the process of implementing the consent decree. And before the new mayor is sworn in um, on May 20th, the summer violence uh, initiative has to be in full effect to make Eddie Johnson and senior management team lame ducks when all that important work has to be done before I take an oath of office absolutely made some, no sense to me it doesn't make any sense to me now uh, we will reevaluate everything from top to bottom with the department after we get past the summer now obviously I'm going to be heavily engaged with them on a regular basis to make sure uh, that they are moving forward and making progress on keeping our community safe but it, the time for evaluation um, isn't now, it's after the summer is over. I, I, I actually ran a police superintendent search. It's not an easy thing. There's, there's, if you look nationally, there's under 10 people probably that can actually do the job uh, in the best of times, and these are tough times, so that number shrinks. Uh, police chiefs uh, and FOP said Kim Fox has got to go yesterday, voted no confidence. Do you support Kim Fox? I do support Kim Fox. Look, she, she's come into, she ran on um, an idea of transforming the way that the um, state's attorney's office conducts its business. Th that is a monumental task. She's only been in office now a couple of years. Of course, she's ruffled some failures because change is difficult for people. I know that. I'm expecting pushback as well, but I do support her. I think she's brought a breath of fresh air to that office, um, and I think she's going to continue to be a good and effective leader in making sure that we have real criminal justice and, and fairness um, in that office, which is desperately needed. Um, you criticized Mayor Emanuel for not releasing the Inspector General's report on Laquan McDonald. Uh, that's now the subject of a judge's gag order. Is that one of the first things that you would like to see released and, and taken care of when you take office? It has to be released. And with due respect to the judge's gag order, um, if that is still in effect, I will make sure that our lawyers go into court and get that lifted. The truth needs to come out. Transparency is critically important, something I, I value as an absolute essential part of good government, and those, those reports are coming out. Nobody wants to talk about raising taxes when they're in a campaign. You're elected now. Will you have to raise property taxes to pay for the pensions? Look, I, we are looking, we just had our first kind of substantive meetings with the mayor's finance team. Obviously, it's a grave situation. We're looking at a number of different options, but my first reflex is not to raise taxes. I think there's lots of other ways, solutions that we have to get to first. And as I've laid out countless times over the course of the campaign, we've also got to demonstrate to taxpayers that we've heard them and that we're going to be far better fiscal stewards of their precious dollars than what we've seen recently. So how do you go about this implementing? Is the last oh, last question. All right, the last question uh, would, would be this. You have called this election a landslide and a mandate for you, but arguably 67% of the registered voters mm -hmm. did not vote for you or Tony Preckwinkle. Uh, how do you win them over, or do you feel like you need to? No, I mean, you look, the, the problem with people not showing up to vote is not unique to this election. It's not unique to Chicago. We've got to give people confidence in, gov in government and in democratic institutions, and that confidence has been eroding for decades, and I think precipitously so in the last four or five years. So I intend to 
make good on the, on the mandate that I've received, but also make good on the commitments that I've made to give people confidence that we're moving forward in a way that re reflects their lived experience. You know, you want to have as many people come out as possible. People have fought and died for the right to vote, but I'm still going to be the mayor of the entire city, and I'm going to govern as such. You want to make any news right now? I, have the chance? I do yeah. not. <laughs> not now. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.